Hey there, welcome back to Liz and Sandro's Marketing Podcast. We continue to share content from our time recording at Baldwin Wallace University. The next two episodes are conversations with the students in the marketing class, so we hope you enjoy what we chatted about. I'm ready now. Go. Welcome back to Liz and Sandro's Marketing Podcast, part two of our visit to Baldwin Wallace University and the content marketing class here under the tutelage of Mr. Tim Marshall. We're going to do an unscripted version of our podcast today and talk to some of the students and find out what's on their mind, what they're learning, what they're what they want to know about the marketing world, professional marketing world. So you seem pretty enthusiastic. Come on up. All right. Yeah. Let's go. Hey. go on, we have a chair over here. You can... Oh, just for me? Yes. Perfect. I'm there. There we go. I think we're okay. So can you tell us your name, your major, what got you into marketing? All right. I am Emma Bruno. I am a junior marketing major here at Baldwin Wallace, and I actually got into marketing because when I was in high school, someone just came up to me and was like, hey, you need to like take marketing and do DECA. And I was like, whoa, I don't know what that is. Like, Sounds cool. I'll do it. And then it ended up being like such a great opportunity, and it kind of led me down this career path. So I'm really lucky that I was so easily... Persuaded, I guess. <laughs> nice. Gave into a little peer pressure, but in a good way. Yeah. It wasn't bad. What so. is De- DECA? DECA, it is a marketing um, and business club. It's actually Distributive Education Clubs of America. Wow. So we go to like um, state level and like international conferences. Very cool. So yeah, I've been to like Disney World for it, Nashville, Atlanta. So it was a really great experience that. Um, kind of helped me get to where I am, I would say. What's your favorite part about the class so far? I think that my favorite part of our content marketing class would probably be that we get to do a lot of real world application of the things that we've been learning in our classes previously. So like the things that I've learned in like advertising management, intro to marketing, intro to business, we're kind of like putting them all together and culmination doing work for actual you know businesses or groups on campus and so we have something to show for everything that we've learned you have an actual client right now uh we do we have an what? on-campus client and an off-campus client you give them Sh- a shout out yeah. yeah shout out to not only them but also my group members you guys out there <laughs> um so our on-campus client is the healthcare mba um, here at Baldwin Wallace. Okay. So if you're in the market for that, check it out. And you're, so the goal there is to attract MBA students to yes. the program. Okay, nice. Yes, and then our off-campus client is Crystal Muscatello. She's a an alternative medicine healthcare. Mm. You know her? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> She's like my business bestie. Okay. <laughs> Love it. Small world. It. So yeah, if, if you couldn't hear that in the mics, uh, our videographer knows knows the client. That's so funny. <laughs> Perfect. So yeah, that's probably one of my favorite parts because, again, it's just like actually getting to put into practice because all the things that we've learned because... I always worry. I'm like, yeah, I'm learning all this stuff. It's awesome. Like, yeah, I know about, like, target marketing, and I know what it means, but, like, what if I don't know how to do it when I have a job and I have to do it? So it's a really great experience, not only to do it here, but also, like, in an internship. So that's been really exciting over the past year for me. Awesome. What does success look like to you after graduation? It's a good question. <laughs> we're working on it. We're, okay. we're on the way there. Um, I actually was um, lucky enough to have the opportunity to have an internship this past summer at the American Eagle headquarters in Pittsburgh. I was in um, corporate social responsibility and um, corporate communications. So I'm going back there this coming summer, and so hopefully I can land a job there in digital marketing or airy brand marketing. That's awesome. So that's kind of my goal. I'm, I'm on the corporate grind. I always say I love corporate America. I'm kind of, yeah. Especially when you can wear jeans. Good for you. When you can wear jeans in a corporate setting, like what more could you ask for? You go to like golf outings. We do like the American Eagle Foundation, like golf outing and... So I'm, like, driving golf carts around, taking photos. Like, I'm schmoozing with, like, the brand 
like presidents, and I'm like, who's trusting me to do this? This is awesome. <laughs> Has, has corporate America changed? I mean, corporate. I, I lasted one year, <laughs> and then I started my own company. So, <laughs> I mean, give it a try. I can't, go, I can't go back now. <laughs> no turning back. Don't. I would say to anybody else, though, don't knock it till you try it. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank you for, your time. for having me. Yeah. Yeah. Any any other specific oh, questions sorry, yeah. for us? Oh, sure. Um, so, <laughs> what do you think? Like the biggest challenges with like consistency across all platforms of like marketing and like communications i don't know if it maybe just for yourselves and your own podcast or any other experiences you guys have had i'm not a creative person um i joined theater when i was here at pw and i found the most creative people on the planet in theater and i loved it they're they're the best parties they have the best they're you're just right awesome. i've been to i love theater <laughs> the theater department here yeah, and I took I got like three credit hours working backstage. My roommate just did that. She yeah, loved it. it's fantastic. So I'm not creative. So I, through osmosis, hanging out through with creative people, I try to be creative. So I hated the challenge for me is being creative regularly. You know, sometimes you're creative at 3 a.m. and I like working from home, or I can just start typing or creating things then. But I'm not as creative as I'd like to be. That's my challenge. So I. Th- I think our approach to that, I, I would say, we try to, I guess, batch our creativity, which it can be hard because yes, you have to, you know, you're not always creative at the spur of the moment. But you know, we like for one client right now, I'm I was looking at our content. I'm like, oh my gosh, we need a refresh. So we're creating a lot of content, and I want it ready to go. You know, we're, we have graphics and you know, and Dropbox and things in a spreadsheet, and we can just kind of at any moment pull what we need and I know that that's going to last us for a couple months and we can be I know that we're going to be active on Instagram and Twitter and Facebook and like I I know that that's all set so I think I think just a lot of planning um yeah I think that's you know taking that time even after you do one you know because when we start working with clients we take the time we put a plan together and then you might find yourself nine months or a year in, and you're like, oh, this just feels stale. Like, you have to remember to schedule the time to go back and, and do a creative refresh. And, and that way, yeah, it's, it's not a challenge to, to be pushing co- out content on all these different channels. Yeah, so, good question. Thank you. Good answer. <laughs> the first one, yeah. Thank you, guys. No, thank you. Let's give a round of applause. Yeah.